Okay. Welcome everyone. Um, I'm Nistrosana Palacios, elementary school counselor from early childhood to second grade. And we are starting that webinar called Safe Socializing in Times of COVID-19. Please feel free to use a chat anytime to write any comments or questions during my, my presentation to make it more interactive. Okay, so first of all, I would like to introduce the term socialization. It is the process beginning during childhood by which individuals acquire the values, habits, and attitudes of society. And it is made through social interactions with others. First with their family members, of course, parents, siblings, uncles, grandparents, and then people around us in neighborhoods, in school, and other environments that are close to the child. So why it is so important? Because children are learning how to navigate social scenarios that, and their learning skills that are gonna use throughout their life. Some of these skills are when and how to join in with others in games or social uh, activities, taking turns, conversation skills and communication skills in general, and emotion regulation. So these lessons seem simple, but they are foundational to healthy social development. Now we are going to talk about the impact on quarantine in children socializing. And I would like to share with you a poll. And the questions are, what is the impact on quarantine on your children's socializing? And the second one is regarding socializing, what will be your main concern? So you have a couple seconds to answer the poll. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna share that results with you. So for the first question, what is the impact of quarantine on your children's socializing? The result is very significant. And then one of you answer average. And the second one regarding socializing, what will be your main concern? And most of you are concerned about safety and others about making friends and feelings of sadness. Okay. So what, what we have noticed throughout these months is that COVID-19 and mostly the quarantine has impacted because now children have less social interactions due to safety measures, which is actually your main concern. We do not trust that our children will remember the safety measures and will actually take care of themselves while playing. But we have also observed that they are more resilient. Many children are showing the ability to recover and adjust. So how to socialize now, how to do it safely are some important questions that we as adults are making ourselves after seven months of quarantine, as we see that our children really need that contact with other people, either other children or adults. So the first one is being knowledgeable about safety. And I actually changed the, the title of this uh, slide after a morning meeting that I had yesterday with a first grade class where we were talking about being knowledgeable. And I asked them a question, which was, what is something you know a lot about? And one of the students answered that she's very knowledgeable about safety measures to prevent COVID-19. And she started sharing with us all the things that she has learned during this time and how it is very important for her to really know about this and be able to go and play in her neighborhood with some of her neighbors. 
So the first thing that you need to do is explain the safety measures by using simple words. You don't need to give um, like long and complicated explanations. And of course, this needs to be age appropriate. Two or three measures is okay. Then display visuals of these safety measures at your house. It could be like where they study or in their bedrooms or a place in the house that everyone could see. And also model the measures all the time because they learn from you. And this is something that we have observed in children. We thought that they would be very reluctant to wear the face mask. And actually, if they see that their parents and adults around them are wearing the mask, the face mask as well, they will be more willing to do it. So these are some ideas of um, visuals that you can use at home. Washing your hands, avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth, wear a face mask when you're out and keep physical distance. Okay, the, the second strategy, and this is something that other countries have been implementing already formally, is to create a safety bubble. A bubble is an unofficial term used to describe the cluster of people outside of your household with who you feel comfortable spending time during pandemic. Okay, and maybe some of you have already started this after so many months in, in quarantine. And these are some um, things you might consider when creating your safety bubble. The first one is when you choose um, the people that you're spending time with, always monitor health conditions. If they've had symptoms of COVID-19, if they have fever or are coughing. The second one is set ground rules. Before you plan these interactions, you can talk to the other adults and set some guidelines on how the interaction is going to work for you. Of course, I'm not sharing like specific things because it will depend on the relationship you have with this person, the place you are meeting, the kind of activities you are doing. And at the end, feel free to not bubble. If at any time you consider that the person or family you have chosen is not following the safety guidelines, you are always um, you are always free to say no. I don't feel comfortable and look for someone else. So now I would like to share some ideas for safe socializing. The first one is outdoor activities, and it is very important because children benefit from having physical activity and being in contact with nature. So some ideas are, okay, sorry, my phone was ringing. Okay, some ideas are going to the park. It's an open space. Of course, you always need to follow the safety measures like wearing face mask and keeping a, um, physical distance, and also activities such as riding bicycles, skating, or things that they can do on their own, but with other people around, that which avoid contact, physical contact. The second one is all school games or promote activities that boost their creativity and imagination. For example, writing letters and making drawings for friends and delivering them to their houses, or planning scavenger hunts in the neighborhood. They are looking for things you said for them already, and they don't necessarily have to be in contact or close uh, contact with anyone else. Some other ideas, of course, involve online interactions. Take advantage of technology to create opportunities for them to interact. And some ideas are playing online games or having online movie nights on Netflix and then sharing about the movie. At the end, these are just ideas. Um, you can consider the resources that you have available and use your creativity and imagination, as I mentioned already. And the most important thing is that when you do that, you always have safety on the top of your mind. So thank you very much. We open the space for questions or comments. Please feel free to share any experiences you've had on the chat regarding um, 
socially, so socializing with your children during this pandemic? Do you have any questions? Of course, these are only some ideas, basic, basic things you need to consider and they might change as the situation of COVID changes also in, in our country. And, and another thing to, to consider is that many of you are not in Panama and safety measures are different in different, different countries. So of course you uh, need to consider that as well. Ms. Batista is also here with us. I don't know if she would like to add something. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Well, yeah, um, just um, to add that I think it's important. Uh, well, I'm always thinking of, young, of older students, but. Uh, I don't know, for first graders and second graders, maybe you can ask uh, your child, how do they feel about going outside, right? Because sometimes we, we assume that that's what they want. Of course, uh, many of them are anxious to go out to the park and play with their friends and have, you know, actual uh, play days. But it's important to ask them, how will they feel about it? And so they can express their emotions regarding that uh, situation of going out. I've heard so many parents saying that their children, they don't want to go out, they don't want to, you know, go to the, to, to short rides and, and they feel quite uncomfortable leaving the house. So it's important to ask them in first place. Yes, and, and actually that's why we included so many options and not all the options involve outdoor activities. Some of them could be uh, online also. The important thing is that they interact with people that are not from their household because we have spent so much time together already and it is always very positive to have some social interactions with classmates, with neighbors, with cousins or other family members that are not in the household. And as I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be necessarily outside, but it could be a good option. And I think it's great what Ms. Batista mentioned, always consider your child's needs. And you may ask them what they want, how they feel about online interactions or going outside because that what Ms. Batista mentioned also made me think about um, some play dates that I try to arrange for, for students. And some of them said that they didn't actually want to have another online meeting. While others were very happy to have this like extra time with their friends online. So it will definitely depend on your child's preferences or needs at the moment, and you can always ask them what they actually want. Thank you. We're trying our best, taking some precautions. Yes. And it has um, it has required a lot from, from adults. Like, you know, now I, I need to take care of my work, of my household, and also be creative to find activities for my child. So this is, this is also another and then another point why asking your children is, very, is so important because they can also give you ideas. I think Miss Amina wanted to share something. I, I just uh, thank you so much, Miss Roxana. This is a super um, informative and helpful uh, conversation and discussion that you're leading. I wanted to also just remind parents, uh, and I heard you mention this earlier, we as adults are modeling these things for our children. So again, if you're if you sense that your child is is anxious about meeting other children, um, you know, and and you want to encourage them to meet other children and socialize off screen, 
uh, with a safe bubble that you've established, it's important that you also help model that. How, how are you as an adult, if that's what you, you want to do, um, and you feel safe doing that. How are you helping your children see how you are developing these bubbles and how you yourself as an adult, you're socializing and taking care of yourself and your social needs. Um, if your children see you doing those things in safe ways and you're not anxious about meeting your friends and you're showing them that, then your children, again, their anxiety levels may be brought down by seeing you model that. So I encourage parents also, as much as children, to, again, consider how you are um, reintegrating into society in a safe way, but that you are also very mindful of, of your own needs as, um, as an adult and, and as a social being. Thank you, Ms. Amina. And Ms. Manzanares also wrote, let's remember that anxious parents also communicate that anxiety to their children. Maybe a good practice would be to teach them about all safety precautions or role play situations and how they would react. This way they feel prepared for any situation. Thank you. I love this um, strategy of role playing and I think it would be very useful um, to just be ahead of situations that might happen and practice reactions or strategies with your children. So, and this is something new for all. So we will be learning as we actually do it. Um, I think in, in previous webinars, we have talked about this anxiety of parents and how it is so important for us as adults to try to stay calm because in that way we will transfer that those feelings to our children and also be more available to listen to their to their needs um i would like to add something uh also like this is a great opportunity and, and since we, we we don't know yet exactly when we are going back to to schools right uh but this is these are great opportunities to start making those approaches like helping them to make like a smoother transition, becoming more familiar with uh, social contact that eventually we were going to go back. And uh, I was reading an article the other day that was telling, uh, uh, recommending parents to be around during those first play dates uh, when you decide like let, letting your children go out and play with other children, be around, pay attention to their behavior so you can so you can um, uh, call out those things that need to be fixed. Like for example, oh, I saw that you were at some point to take off your mask or you forgot to wash your hands or like pointing out to those uh, behaviors that can be um, fixed or uh, they can, they- um, Yeah, I was, I was, thank you, Ms. Batista. And I was also thinking that you can share some other examples for them to understand the importance of these safety measures. And you can say, for, for instance, when you go out and ride a bicycle, you need to use or wear a helmet and some other equipment to protect yourself if you fall. So this is something very similar. In order to protect yourself from getting sick, you need to do these things. Um, wash your hands, wear a, fa wear a face mask, do not touch your face and keep some distance from your friends. And you can even uh, find other ways to say hello. We already do it with the elbow, but they can also do it with creative ways that are fun for them as well. So with children, it's, it's a lot about being creative and you know, following the, um, the guidelines. Um, we need to for staying safe, but also using our own imagination and creativity for them to have fun and have an experience that is positive for, for themselves. So we are going to share with you some articles about um, safe socializing in times of COVID-19. And you may find those articles in our website, the counselor's website. And we will also share the recording of this webinar in case you were not able to participate or would like to watch it again. 
So if there isn't any more comments, let me see if there is. I would like to thank you everyone who joined today. And next week we are going to talk about safe socializing too, but for older students. So see you next week, parents from EC3 to, sorry, from third to fifth grade. And thank you very much for the ones who attend today. You. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Bye. Stop recording. Yo no sé si se grabó ahora. Sí, sí. Se grabó.